You're ready to go. Anytime. <laughs> In the open meetings laws, do you have to start like exactly on the period? Can't start early, but you can start late. You can start late. Forty-five seconds. Okay, thirty seconds. <laughs> Gee, when did you graduate from Pius? I did not know you went to Pius. Sixty-nine. All right. Long time ago. Do you go back and play in those alumni basketball tournaments? I used to, but not anymore. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the agenda for the West Hay Market uh, Joint Public Agency for today. My name is Chris Beitler, and with me today are Councilman Carroll and Regent Clare. Uh, uh, the first item on the agenda, uh, introductions and notice of the open meetings law. That open meetings law is posted in the back of the room, and we follow those rules. Uh, we encourage public comment. There is a time limitation of five minutes on public comment on specific items, and we ask those who testify to identify themselves for the official record when they come forward. The third item on the agenda today is the approval of the minutes from the JPA meeting held on May 3rd, 2013. Is there a motion Move. on the minutes? Move approval. I will second. Been moved and seconded to approve the minutes. Any further discussion? Call the roll. Beitler? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Claire? Yes. They are approved. Item number four, approval of the April 2015 payment registers uh, to be presented by Steve Hupka. The April payment registers are here for your approval. Uh, they total between the, the main one and the one from Public Works, about $10,810,000. The majority is made up of a payment to Mortensen and to Houseman Dunn for deck one, which those two payments are about $9 million of the total. Any questions, questions of Steve? Still tracking on the budget? Yes. Mm -hmm. And Auditing-wise, are we getting all the signatures necessary? Yes, we continue to follow the same procedures, yes. Great. Okay, thank you, Steve. Is there public comment on the payment registers? Seeing none, do I have a motion on the... Move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded that the April payment registers be approved. Any further discussion? Call the roll. Beitler? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Claire? Yes. Stand approved. Agenda item number five, review of the expenditure reports, again presented by Mr. Hubka. Now the job cost reports and the operating expenditure report is presented for the month of April as well. Um, we do um, might once again po point out that there is a report for phase two, for the phase two budget, which is second month we've done that other than that they they reflect the expenditures okay any questions of steve thank you steve is there any public comment on agenda item number five seeing none no motions required we'll move on to agenda item number six the west hay market progress report and paula yancey Good afternoon. Um, it's a pleasure to be here again and provide our monthly updates on all the progress we're making. I have a little announcement that Adam Hobelheinrich is not with us today because him and his wife had their baby girl last week, so I want to offer congratulations to them. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started on the report. 
Um, on our local participation report, we're really kind of um, flatlining as to where we've been over the past several months. We will probably have one or two more reports, but we expect them to be um, within the similar ranges. Um, we've had about 2,384 2, Nebraskans working on the job through the engineering and professional services phases. Um, 277 are um, outside of Nebraska, which equates to 2,661, or 90% um, of the workers are Nebraskans. On the Davis-Bacon, which is the construction employees that we track through the certified payrolls, we've had 2,186 Nebraskans on the job, which equates to about 92%, um, and then an 8%, or 194 from areas outside of Nebraska. On the company participation, we've had a total, we've let a total 401 contracts. Of those, 296 have gone to Nebraska firms, or 74%. And again, we're kind of staying um, within our 159 million of Nebraska dollars out of the 223 to date. So for the infrastructure progress, um, if you haven't been down there lately, it's it's quite amazing as to what is going on and how much has been um, put in place over the past several months. And now that we've had a couple um, uh, strings of days without rain, they're really moving forward with a lot of the infrastructure. Here you can see the east face of the future rail yard building. This is standing in the intersection, um, looking at the post office in the north. The next slide, we've actually started the Canopy Street um, actual pouring of the street and here you're looking north towards the arena at the paving operations with the lofts building the hotel and the rail yard is on your right or on the east um, pouring the canopy street and here's a close-up of the view of hawkins getting that street put in place and here's another image where you can see it going all the way to the south um, Hawkins has also started the next side of the Pinnacle Arena Drive. So in this image, they're doing the subgrade prep and the grading in order to um, place that side of the street. Um, deck number one is topped out. It's reached its highest point. They're now doing interior topping slab pours within the garage. Um, and again, this, is, this garage is expected to be open um, in August. The festival space work continues. In this image, you can see them curing and saw cutting the pavement for the parking lot. And here's another view of that. This is looking from the north abutment. Here's our overall aerial of the arena. The, the, probably the key point that's changed the most since um, last month is the ramp on the side of the arena that goes up to the um, elevated plaza area. And this one was actually almost a month ago, so there's a lot more work in place since this one was taken. And then this one shows you the overall aerial image of, of progress to date on the entire Haymarket site. I'll turn it over to John for an arena update. Hey, Paul, um, on the, the shot from the, the aerial, it looks like that, that metal girder on the bridge, has that been installed? On the pedestrian bridge? Yeah, right here. Yes, in this image, yes, it had been installed. Oh, did it come off after that? It, it's not off. It's it's still there. We're working through the um, through testing of, of what happened in that. So eventually, portions of that girder will be removed and replaced. Okay, I thought it had been removed. Never no. Mind. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm John Henshaw, Mortensen Construction. Uh, here to do a little update on the arena. Um, we were all part of an early announcement for the arena um, opening August, turning more than we turned the keys over August 14th in time for the UNL graduation. So um, that was a big event this last month. A lot of milestones were achieved this month. Um, we're continuing to paint on all levels, ceiling installation continues, and bathroom fixtures. Precast erection <clears throat> is complete. Precast is one of the riskier operations in construction. We've erected four different types and 1,500 pieces of, of precast in the job, and that was erected uh, out um, last week. The zinc metal panel, which is the silver panels on the arena, um, have all been installed. 
The seating um, continues on the upper concourse and the retractable seating is now uh, working on its third section in the bowl. Site paving started. Oh. Oh. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Site paving has started, sound system started, and the actual punch list of the arena has actually kicked off this month as well. Safety, um, we worked 126 days without any kind of safety incidents on the project. We average around 350 construction workers daily. Um, we've had one incident in 343 days, so hopefully next month we'll be able to report. We've had one incident in a year, so that's a big, big accomplishment for the craft on the site. Um, and Morton's and ourselves have um, been one year without any recordable incidents ourselves. We had a safety lunch uh, last Friday, um, oh, uh, probably the last big safety lunch in the project. The worker, workers are going to start, um, the workers on site are going to start decreasing probably in June. Um, in the bottom right corner, you can see me shaking the hand of Doug with Gephardt Electric. Um, Gephardt, Waldinger, and Foulwitz Drywall have all worked at 100,000 man hours without any recordables in the projects. We recognize them for those achievements. And also Davis Erection for recognizing 1,500 pieces of precast without incident at that safety lunch. Um, here's a picture of the seat installation. The seats that actually fold down on the retractables is what this is a, this is a picture of. And here's a picture of the seats installed with the, the bleachers retracted. <clears throat> Sound system kicked off, and these are actually the amps up, the, the amplifiers that are located up on the center uh, platform in the catwalk being installed. Picture of the kitchen commissary, the food service equipment continues to arrive and be installed. And this is the main commissary on a vent level where all the uh, um, main cooking will be done for the arena. Suite finishes continue um, on suite level. We're getting ready to um, punch the first eight suites on suite level. Club lounge finishes continue to be installed. Uh, here's a picture of one of the two bars in the club lounge and the glass tile being installed there. The uh, um, lobby is ringed with a stainless steel rail. These gentlemen are working on the uh, stainless steel rail that'll ring the lobby. Here's a view of the um, lobby. There was a large scaffold in here for three and a half months to do all the high finishes that was broken down this month and now we're starting to do the actual lobby finishes and finish the grand stair the escalators and polish the main concourse concrete so this is a view of the open lobby here is the ceiling installation um, being done uh, by paul kess a local ceiling subcontractor in the lobby a vertical shot of the lobby and you can see the light fixtures above and another fixture of the light, I'm gonna call it a light fixture sculpture in the lobby. There's, they run through in three different lines, creating a nice visual pattern in the lobby. Polished concrete continues on uh, main concourse and upper concourse. This gentleman's with Stevens and Smith, and he's grinding the floors, getting ready to polish them. And here's a view um, looking down from the catwalk of the north end zone and the stain and polish there being installed. Um, scoreboard today was actually the first day the scoreboard was lit up in the arena so it actually came on today and um, over the next month we'll start to uh, program the scoreboard up in the rafters the acoustical baffles were installed this month the baffles uh, prevent bass reverb for concerts and give the arena a good con a good acoustic performance and uh, these were installed this month and then the ramp precast direction, like mentioned earlier, uh, topped out last week. This gentleman is finishing some of the welds there on the ramp. A shot from the north of um, TCW, a local subcontractor, doing all the uh, curb, gutter, and paving. Another shot of the paving installed from the north side. And then once again, another curb shot. The actual uh, Pinnacle Bank Arena sign went up. Um, on the arena and this is a couple days ago it's now black but the actual pinnacle bank arena facing south has been installed that's an overall update on the progress of the last month any questions will there be lights shining off the dome at night um not off the top of the dome but there are accent lights around the um drum no, but there's no at the base of the drum at the base of the shining drum, up on the drum on the panels yeah Okay. All right. Any questions of? I'm not going to ask my Paul? regular question if he's on time. <laughs> <laughs> we're, yes, yes, we're on time. Let's go ahead and state that for the record. All right. Uh, is there any 
public comment on agenda item number six. If not, we'll move on to agenda item number seven, WH 1344, resolution uh, authorizing certain actions with respect to the DAS concession agreement. Paula. Yes, uh, WH 1344, what this does is it's a resolution to authorize the JPA chairperson to enter into an agreement with Concourse Communications Group. And what Concourse Communications Group does is they provide a distributed antenna system through the Pinnacle Bank Arena. Um, what this does is create a neutral host environment for cellular service providers. Concourse and their parent company, which is Boingo Wireless, they will design, construct, install, operate and maintain this system in the arena for the ability to do that they they enter into the agreements with the various cellular carriers and they will pay the jpa either 40 percent or the prorated quarterly fee whichever is greater um, so we actually the jpa actually earns money from the ability to put in a distributed antenna system in the building this agreement is for 10 years with two five-year options um, and we bid this through the purchasing department, um, went through an interview process, and the committee um, selected the Boingo Wireless based on their experience and their proposal that they put forward. And so we recommend approval. Questions of Paula? Is there any public comment on agenda item number seven? Do I have a motion on the resolution? Move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve WH 1344. Further discussion? Call the roll. Beitler? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Claire? Yes. Stands approved. Agenda item number eight, WH 1345, resolution with respect to aerial lifts. Uh, and bid number 13109. Hi. Good afternoon. Um, Good afternoon. This one is uh, it's Canda Jellance with PC Sports. This is for resolution 1345 for approval of NMC Incorporated for providing an articulating boom lift, which also includes training, and also they are a local vendor. This item was bid through the city purchasing department and NMC was low bidder and meets the specifications for a total award of $93,893. And the amounts within the FF&E budget and we recommend approval of this contract. Okay. Questions? Nope. Thank you. Thanks. Is there public comment on agenda item number eight? Seeing none, uh, is there a motion? Move approval. Second. The moved and seconded to approve 1345. Further comment? Call the roll. Tyler? Yes. Carol? Yes. Claire? Yes. The resolution is approved. Agenda item number nine, WH 1346, a resolution again dealing with aerial lift equipment contracts. Uh, yes. Dean 109. Yes, sir. Um, resolution number 13 46 is for OER services to provide two aerial or could be considered scissor lifts, um, which it also includes training. The item was bid through the city purchasing department and OER services was the low bidder and meets the specifications for a total award of 13655 Again, the amount is within our FF&E budget and we recommend approval of this contract. Questions? Is there public comment on agenda item number nine? Seeing none, is there a motion? Move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve 1346. Further comment? Call the roll. Feitler? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Claire? Yes. Resolutions approved. Agenda item number 10, WH 1347, relating to the approval of the portable concession carts contract. It's me again. Again. Yes. Last one, I hope, today. They just um, unleashed you today. Didn't <laughs> yes. They? Uh, resolution 1347 is for approval of carts of Colorado to provide the portable concession carts. This item was bid through the city purchasing department and carts of Colorado was the low bidder and meets the specifications for a total award of 267922 
This number also includes a not to exceed amount for freight and installation. The amount was, uh, is within our ff &E budget and we recommend approval of this contract. Questions? Thank you. This is a public comment on agenda item number 10. Seeing none, is there a motion? Move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve 1347. Further comment? Call the roll. Beitler? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Claire? Yes. Resolutions approved. Agenda item number 11, WH 1348, with respect to allowable fill restriction agreements. Dan Marvin. Oh, um, thank you. Uh, I'm Dan Marvin, and uh, this has kind of uh, been a process that's been undergoing. We've been working on for about six months. Um, I brought a map along here, which would be in your packet. Basically, we have a large parcel, and we're dividing it into three different um, parcels. And then the agreement that you have before you allows for a certain amount of fill per area. Um, Dan, is that turned on? Oh. Maybe the green light might make a difference. Let's see. Takes a second. But what you'll see and what's in the in the packet and, and, and is online for the public are three different colored areas. Uh, the blue is what we're calling our festival space parking lot. Uh, the green area is currently served by the city. Uh, that's the 901 building. And the uh, salmon color um, is the area that is the future site for the Breslow. And what this agreement does is allow the amount of fill to go on these three different parcels uh, according to the rules and regs from FEMA. Okay, questions of Dan? Seeing none, is there public comment? Seeing none, do I have a motion? Move approval. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve 1348. Further comment? Call the roll. Beitler? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Claire? Yes. It is approved. Agenda item number 12, WH 1349, relating to a storage space lease agreement. Again, Dan Marvin. Uh, what, what you have before you is it, within deck one, we had a, a small area that was going to serve uh, parking services, but then later we discovered that didn't necessarily need that area for parking services. And at the same time, uh, Traction Development was looking for an opportunity to provide some storage areas. Some of it would be for bicycles and the like. And so we entered into an agreement with uh, Traction to uh, lease this space from us. Um, and the terms of the lease are $5 per square foot for basically a cold storage area. And they were people, patrons of uh, the traction project would be able to lease this space out or sublease it out and store their bikes or other uh, storage needs that they might have in this particular area. The amount of their rent um, is about $8,445 and it escalates with the uh, uh, cost of living uh, CPI index. How did you determine the amount of the rent? The amount of the rent was, uh, did some kind of survey of the, of the area. Uh, there was um, some rental in the, in the basement of the uh, Lincoln Station and surveyed, so figured that was a third party vendor. Um, and the amount that we're charging is comparable to what's being charged in some other areas. And, and so that's how we agreed upon that amount. Additional questions of Dan? Thank you, Dan. Is there any public comment on agenda item number 12? Seeing none, is there a motion Move on approval. the item? Second. Been moved and seconded to approve 1349. Any further comment? <coughs> Call the roll. Beitler? Yes. Carroll? Yes. Claire? <coughs> Resolution is approved. Agenda item number 13, without objection, the next meeting will be Friday, June 14th, 2013, at 3 p.m. in room 303. Are you both okay with that? <laughs> Not me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Uh, I'll second, but I, I just would say 
thanks for your service. Thank you. Absolutely. Call the roll. Spitler. Yes. Carol. Yes. Claire. Yes. We are adjourned.